Hi guys, welcome to Asher and Gad channel, making Africa home again, one family at a time. I hope you're all doing well wherever you are on this planet, and I hope you're all making plans, gradual plans, to transition from the four corners of the earth back to the motherland. Absolutely, hope you are making those gradual plans because there is no place like home, as they say. Right, anyway, so thanks to all our subscribers, our 11,000 plus subscribers, well appreciated love for the love. Uh, we thank all those who contribute to our PayPal uh, and also to our, our, our Patreon family as well. That is all very much appreciated. The love for the love and um, we keep on moving. So here we are. Today, another episode on the Asher and Gad channel and um, really an another frustrating artisan. An artisan who has been frustrating for really a long time. I have to say, really a long time. And this guy... This guy, he has deserved the sack for a while. He has deserved the sack for a while, uh, but it just, it just that uh, it was, it was too late in, too late in the game, too, too late in the process to really get rid of him. Um, I remember when, we, when we were in the UK, we, um, we made inquiries for somebody who does, you know, electric fencing and security and other, and other, and other things. And this guy came highly recommended. He started the work when we were not here. He, he, you know, he went, went quite far. So when, when we got here for, and we actually got to know him and his attitude, my word, you know, there, there are some issues there, definitely. He knows what he's doing generally, but his timekeeping is very poor. He lies a lot, so much. You know, for example, he said he was gonna turn up on Monday, right? And it's today is Friday, he still hasn't turned up. You call him and he gives you one excuse after another. You know, that's the, that's the reality, reality of some of these artisans really but anyway let me get into the real issue of today yeah the real issue of today now the real issue of today what i want to bring to your attention really is the electric fence really is the electric fence like i said you know like i said really it's it's, it's too late to sack him but huh I definitely would not be recommending him. Somebody sent me a, a, a message the other day to, to, to recommend him and I told them quite frankly that you do not want him simply because of the headache he will cause you. You'll get the job done, but the headache and the unprofessionalism is not worth it, this particular individual. But anyway, let's get straight to it. Right, I'm gonna turn my camera around to show you the issue with the electric fence. Here we are guys, uh, I'm just showing you a picture of the top of the electric fence. Um, I was going around the other day and um, I just noticed that, sometimes, you know, most of the time when you put it on, I, I, hear, I hear a noise too, I hear a click noise, uh, especially when it's raining. And the other night, you know, it was raining heavily, all the, the walls were wet, you know, the concrete walls were all wet right all of these walls were wet and i was hearing a click noise a click noise a click noise and i thought what is that let me just come and do a further inspection you know I've, i have inspected this before but sometimes it's only when you move in that you see even more right so i, I came to have, a, have an inspection here and in this corner let me just zoom in there was a flashing okay there was a flashing between this bottom line here that bottom conductor and the concrete wall which was wet, by the way. Now, as you can imagine, I was fuming. I was absolutely fuming because this live conductor here, flashing onto the concrete wall, which was actually wet at the time, means that the fence itself, the wall itself, becomes a conductive piece of material. So if somebody was attached to the wall, whether they're inside the house or a passes or a passerby, they would get an unpleasant shock. So as you can imagine, I was absolutely, completely fuming. You know, picked up the phone to this guy and gave him a piece of my mind. Gave him a few choice, few choice words which I cannot repeat. Absolutely, absolutely fuming. And not only is it occurring in this location, it's occurring in, in another location as well. I'm sharing with you the video of that flashing um you may have to zoom in a bit closer to see it because it, it, unfortunately it's happened at night time all right so you, I, I turned the audio off because there's some choice words in there i send the video to him but just zoom in and you may if you if you pay careful attention you probably see the flashing over which is extremely dangerous 
okay because the wall is become live imagine if you're you know you're walking around you know it's rained you know the, the night before whatever the walls are wet you you, you 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 don't know and you just lean against the wall and you have an unpleasant shock it's just absolutely bonkers absolutely totally wrong totally wrong from a health and safety point of view totally wrong from all aspects now i i was fuming really really fuming so well, you know what what i did was i i contacted the guy told him about what had happened and you know he, 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 sometimes he's got this sort of attitude i'm saying attitude is everything his attitude is bad he, he, he told me that oh you know I, i'm being too fussy and he's installed this for years and years he hasn't had this complaints told him i don't i don't give a toss i don't give a toss about what, what you've done and whether you've had complaints or not Maybe this is the first time I'm meeting an engineer. I'm an electrical engineer who's been in construction for a long time, and I know what I'm talking about. This is dangerous. This is wrong. If somebody is passing by, one, one thing is the occupants. If somebody is passing by and they mistakenly touched my wall and the wall is wet, I do not want to get, I do not want them to get electric shock. I don't care. Because if they get electric shock, I'm sued. You will definitely also be sued big time. I promise you that. And it, you, do you know what, he, what his response was? Cheekily said, oh, well, people don't really want them to touch. People don't really want passers, passers by to touch their wall. Yeah, well, of course they don't. I know that. And the, the, it's very unlikely that they'll touch your wall because of where they're walking. But in the unlikely event that they happen to touch your wall for whatever reason, guess what? I do not want them to have an electric shock. Yeah? So your answer is completely, completely unacceptable completely unacceptable and we went back and forth over the phone until eventually i told him you know what i know what i'm talking about come and sort it out i'm not gonna pay i'm not going to pay you the rest of your money until you sort this out so then just because he's an annoying character uh, he knows he's wrong but he wants to try and uh, find a way around he wants to make some some feeble excuses in order not to not to expend not to you know spend money but Thankfully, I, I still owe him for some from work he has done. So I'm still holding that money back until he comes and sort this out and then finishes the rest. Okay, so in order to solidify my point, okay, I sent an email to the manufacturer of the electric fence. Very, the manufacturer is very good, Nemtech. Okay, very good manufacturer. I sent an email to them to explain the whole situation so that I could get it in writing from them and forward it to him to just, just to really shut him up. And I'm going, to, I'm going to read the exact words of my email and read a couple of responses I got back from the manufacturer so you guys can, can appreciate what I'm talking about. Just bear with me. So here's my email to Nemtech. And I said, really, I just said, I need an urgent response to this. I'm showing it on your screen anyway, guys. A specialist has installed your Nemtech electric fence system. Watch the attached video. Sorry, it's in the evening, so it's dark. Same video I just showed you guys. The first line is quite close to the top of the wall and it's flashing onto the wall, which for me is very dangerous for the home occupants and passers-by. In this video, it is also raining slightly and the concrete walls are wet, even worse. My question is, number one, what is the minimum distance the first wire needs to be above the top of the wall in order to prevent this scenario? Basically, I'm asking for the manufacturer's recommendation. Okay, in this situation, sorry, is this situation as dangerous as I think? Apologies for the tone of the email as I'm quite concerned and it is aimed at the installer. So that was my email to them. I'm now sharing with you guys uh, on your screen the, the f I got a number of responses from them as it, as it happens, but I'm going to share with you the, the first response I got. Let me see if I can find it. Right, this is it. All right, so showing it on your screen. Dear Kingsley, thank you for your email. Kindly note that all Nemtech energizers are designed to be non-lethal according to international regulations. That's good to hear. Therefore, it cannot kill or injure you. The shock received is very unpleasant and once shock, one does not want to be shocked again. I'm sure about that. That wire is installed too close to the wall. As I thought, the minimum distance it should be from the wall is 50 to 100 millimeters. That's five 
to 10 centimeters. I would go for the five centimeters. 10 centimeters may be a bit too, bit too big and maybe a, a security loop in your centimeters. 50 millimeters is good. A solution would be for the installer to move that wire further away from the wall or to change his configuration. I suggest you contact him to come and fix it. Right then, the, then he wanted to know the actual energizer that was installed on my property, which I sent to him, and the conclusion was still the same. The wire is too close to the wall, just as I said, just as I said. So obviously, as I forwarded it to the guy, uh, which obviously was a big, a big shame for him, you know, he, he, he's read it, and I repeat, I repeated to him in a very angry tone, "Come and sort this out, or else. Come and sort this out, or else. You know, and." There are a couple of options. Either he moved the wire up, which would, which would mean, I mean, the reason why he's being resistant is that um, you know moving the wire up is not may not be is not necessarily a simple process. He 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 has to probably move a, a longer stretch of the fence to move that up. Yeah, but that is what that is the option he needs to do. Number one, or number two, he changes his configuration. What I mean by changing his configuration is that. And if you don't understand how electric fence works, click up here to watch my video explaining how the electric fence actually works. Now, by changing this configuration, what I mean is, I just, change, I just turn my camera around to show you guys. Right, so what I mean is guys, we've got, we've got six lines here above the wall. Some of the lines are positive, some of the lines are negative or earth, right? Now the earth will not, will not spark onto the wall so what, what we, some of these lines are positive some of these lines are, are the earth right so what we mean by change configuration he can change the configuration such that the line that is close to the wall is a negative line or the earth return and, and that will that will not that will not um spark onto the wall okay that is the alternative solution okay so i've given him both these options it's up to him to choose which one he wants to go with or if he has another another solution i don't care just make it safe okay just make it safe and even this issue about it doesn't kill or or or, 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 or injure um but just gives you a very very unpleasant shock there are there are factors involved yeah depending on the moisture content of your body yeah it may not just be a very unpleasant shock it may cause some injury it is possible there are various factors involved it is possible that it could cause some injury yeah so you just don't want to risk it it needs to be installed properly along along here is is, is that is that is a good distance that is correct yeah it's just where it's just where he's done the slope that he's sort of made a mistake okay but along there and there's another there's, let's just just go around there's another part also where i think it's it's, it's the slope is the slope area where he struggled above here is all okay you know the distance above the wall is all fine don't get confused with the with the with that with the um the high high voltage wires ecg wires behind but yeah the, these distances are fine you can see that that distance there yeah that is pretty all right so I'm, you, you may be mixing up with the wires <clears throat> high tension ecg wires behind but but those if you just see that let me just zoom in for you that distance there is about 50 millimeters which is absolutely fine absolutely fine is when he comes to the slope Aha, another example is when he's come to the slope, that's when he's, he's messed up. That's when he's messed up here completely, right? So he, he needs to sort that out. He needs to sort that out. And uh, for me, this, 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 this branch here is even slanted. That for me needs to be straightened and he needs to, be, he needs to put a, a bracing to keep it straight. And maybe as he straightens it, that will lift that wire up a bit. But let's see. Let's see. He's, he's, He's the expert, so he will have to come in and sort it out. Are you looking to build your dream home in Ghana? Or are you building already? Would you benefit from regular site visits to monitor your building and receive regular progress reports? 
Well, if that's the case, and that's you, look no further, Asher & Gag Consultancy at your service. We offer the following services, electrical design, construction monitoring inspections, site progress reports, consultation for all items MEP, witnessing of testing and commissioning, periodic snagging, vetting of specialist subcontractors. We also report site activities to you to hopefully help you spend your money efficiently and much, much more. Get in contact for your building needs, details on the screen, Asher & Gag Consultancy, make in Africa home again, one family at a time. Okay guys, now, not only is this a risk to the occupants or passers-by, passers-by less of a risk because there's some, there is some distance between the road where they work, where they walk and the wall, okay, but it's, you know, risk to, risk to occupants and even our dogs, <laughs> you know, even our dogs, you know. You know, if our if if the, if our dog's body touch the, the the wall and they get a shock, you know, you know, or, or you know, seriously injured, whatever it is, I will, I will not be happy at all because you know, you know, we've invested in those dogs, we, we bought them with money, you know, we've trained them for for a while, so, and they they serve a purpose, so I want I'll be very pissed off if that happens as well. So I told him all this, and he's still making feeble, feeble excuses, but because I'm holding his money. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna come. We booked an appointment, and he's gonna come and sort it out. Even though, it's, even though it's gonna be painful for him, because obviously he's, he's gonna have to do his labour all over again. But that's his problem, and his, his, let's say, let's say, uh, lack of um, supervision maybe on his, on his, on his, on, on his staff. Okay, because he, he, his, his staff did it for him. Maybe he didn't come and supervise. He didn't come and do a quality check on something that's very, very dangerous. So that's, that's, that's really on him. Now guys, apart from the, 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 the risk of an unpleasant shock, there's another thing. If that wire keeps on sparking onto the wall continuously, 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 it could damage the high voltage transformer, which is in the energizer. I'm showing you a picture on your screen. Okay, the manufacturer actually asked for my, my, my energizer, as I mentioned earlier. This is the energizer, which is in, in the building. That is what is plugged into the socket and that is what brings causes the, the fence to become energized it puts about eight thousand or nine thousand volts on the fence okay it's a pulsed volts and that there's a transformer in there and if, if it continuously is sparking onto the wall for a long time it will damage the transformer and guess what that means the system will not last as long as it should do and therefore it will it will break down and you will have to spend more money to get it replaced you see so this these are the issues that you need to be aware of when your electric fence is being installed or even if you already have an electric fence maybe yours is sparking but you don't know what you don't know what it is so maybe you just ignore it you thought it's, it's just it's just nothing because maybe somebody told you oh, it, 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 it doesn't mean anything it does so check your electric fence in your home make sure that the distances is correct make sure it's not sparking onto the wall either so that not only is it safe you don't have to spend money replacing it if the transformer gets damaged. So hopefully that was useful. Now guys, so come back to this guy again. Let's just, let's, let's just walk around with you and show you a couple of things. Now, like I said, you know, he's, he, he, he genuinely knows what he's doing apart from this, this cock up here. I uh, know he's the one who installed the automated gate for us at the front. Uh, he installed all our CCTV. Um, he installed the roof automated, automated gate as well um so you know he it, it does know what he's doing generally but he, he he's rather unreliable and his attitude is definitely uh, one that, that 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 is questionable very very questionable and he, and tell you what i'm not being funny but he lies a lot he he lies so much it's, it's, it's just unbearable but anyway what i wanted to say is after he's installed the electric fence okay i have told him that everything you need to test it so that i know that is working properly and then he took then at that point he said oh he hasn't got the the, the the necessary equipment to test the electric fence now we i, I know it's working because you can hear you can hear the buzzing but but as electrical systems go you should be testing it with the right equipment to test that is working properly okay and to test the walls and everything right so at the end of the day it's not my business if you haven't got the right equipment then this is what you're going to do you, next time you come we book the appointment we're going to liven the electric fence after you finished your work 
and you, if you're confidently telling me that the, the, all the concrete walls are safe after your works, you're going to liven it and you're going to go around and touch every single section of the concrete wall. Every single section you're going to touch. When I say section, I mean this, these sections, guys. These, this sort of uh, three, meet, three, three and a bit meter section, 10 foot section. He's going to go around, we're going to live in it, I'm going to stand away. He's, him or his staff, whatever, he's going to touch every single section. Every single section, all around the plot. Every single section, okay? Every single section. Now, <laughs> he tells me that after he's, finishing, after he's finished correcting the work, he's very comfortable to do that. Well, no problems. No, if you, if you are comfortable to test every single section, it's your problem that you didn't invest in the, in, the right, in the right equipment to test it. So if you're comfortable, touch every single section and, and my wife and our other home occupants that this fence wall cannot become live and everything is safe. Then we'll be happy. Then I can pay you the rest of your, of your money. No issues. Well, guys, you know, I'll, I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you posted on the, on the events that unfold. Um, it will get sorted. It will definitely get sorted. I just, I just give all praises to the Most High Yahuwah for, for bringing this to my attention because I, I could have easily missed it. Okay? So that's why I thought I'd share it. Very, very dangerous. Um, perhaps before you employ an electric fence installer, security ins ins installer, ask all these questions. Do they have the right equipment? Ask all these questions from what I've shared with you guys so that you know that you're going to get the right thing installed. And even if you ask other questions, some, some of them can give you all the right answers. That doesn't mean that they will install it correctly. Be on the ground yourself if you can. If you can't, then get somebody you trust to go and inspect, supervise, and monitor your construction as well. Because, you know, such, such you know, let's say incompetent uh, situations, you know, can cause serious harm you know all over ghana even in the health service and other places there, there are there, there have been incompetencies that have injured people and even been fatal right so this is not this is not just about electric fence about other things as well you know so that's this you know we have to we have to be vigilant you know it's a developing country you have to be vigilant and uh, so that um everything is safe and you get what you want in your building so guys i will keep you posted okay we'll definitely keep you posted uh, about about what happens, what transpires, you'll come and sort it out. Uh, so, so stay tuned to Asher and Gad channel. As usual, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button so you always be aware when Asher and Gad upload a new video for your educational pleasure. All right? So, from Gad, it is Kemesia, and from me, guys, Yebeshia. See you next time.